Hello, welcome back to the All Games 4K YouTube channel, and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk an immense amount of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a very, very popular sort of strategy game that was released around, I think it was 2014. We're going to be talking about Terror. Mystica and uh, in this game what you'll be doing you'll be taking control of a race or faction you'll be terraforming the land to suit your own specific race and then you'll be building structures you'll be building structures gaining power gaining special abilities and you'll be trying to get the most victory points by the end of the sixth round and uh, in this video we'll be telling you what we do like what we don't like and then we'll come back and we will tell you whether or not Terra Mystica is still worth playing in 2019 so if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment about this video in the comment section down below and we'll see you after this board games 4k we're, what we're going to do we're going to tell you about how the game flows we'll tell you about the actions that you can take and then we'll tell you about some end game scoring we'll keep it nice and brief right and then we'll we'll get into what we think about it this game is spread over six rounds and you'll be following a very strict amount of phases so the first phase is the income phase and what you do you look around on your faction boards you look around on your your favor tiles and all that sort of stuff and you'll look for a palm that is outstretched with anything on it and you'll take that into your into your player area or you'll uh, use the bowls of power you'll move uh, tokens around on the bowls of power so you get your money you get your resources you get your power and then you move on to the action phase so the first action that you can take on your on your turn is you can transform the land you can terraform the land and or build on that dwelling on that space so what you do every faction's got their own unique type of terrain that they feel most comfortable with and you've got a wheel on front on your board with a load of spades on and what you do you look at your point to the the terrain that you want to transform and then you'll go around count the number of spades that you need till you get to your terrain that's how many spades you have to spend and the amount of spades that you've got there's a little chart on the side of your player board that tells you the amount of workers you need to give up to get that amount of spades and there's various other ways of getting spades you can take a bonus action or you can get them from favor tiles or various other ways and you pay your spades they're sort of virtual spades so you don't actually give anything up apart from workers when you do it and then you will take a another tile and you will put it on that on that space and that now becomes that type of terrain so swamps mate you could turn swamps into say uh, lakes or, or whatever and then the other option you've got in, the, in this action is you could build a dwelling so you'll look on your player board you'll pay the cost and you'll take the dwelling off and when you take things off your board it reveals other benefits you get in the income phase so you'll place that on the toll you've just terraformed and then nobody else can then terraform that land so any any tiles that have been terraformed and got a building or structure on them can no longer be terraformed right so there's also various other rules that are fiddly rules about you know, building and proximity of people and then you give people power and that sort of thing we're not going to go into that you can read the rules for yourself because that would just blow your brain out right so the second thing you can do is you can advance on the shipping track and what you'll do you'll pay the cost and then you'll move your little token up on the shipping track and then you'll get a certain amount of victory points and what that allows you to do that essentially allows you to terraform and build further away from a, a tile so you don't necessarily need to be directly adjacent to a tile you can build further away from the tiles that you've already terraformed so the third action you can do is you can lower the exchange rate for spades and you'll, you'll see that on that little chart we talked about earlier you can move up on that track pay the cost take the victory points and that will mean that you have to pay less workers for spades nice so the next thing you can do is you can upgrade one of your structures so you can turn dwellings into trading houses trading houses can be turned into strongholds or temples and then temples can be turned into sanctuaries and what you'll do if you turn a trading post into a temple then you get to take a favor toll and then likewise if you turn a temple into a sanctuary then you get to take another favor toll and again you'll be revealing various bonuses from underneath the structures that you build so the next thing you can do is you can send a priest to a cult and there's various ways of getting priests we're not going to go into that but if you've got a priest in your pool then you can send them to one of the cult tracks and then you'll look at the number underneath where you put them you'll move up on that cult track if you move on to or move past the bonus then you will take that bonus and that could be victory points it could be power it could be money it could be 
all sorts of stuff. So the next thing you can do is you can take a power action there. There's a, a variety of power actions on the bottom of the board and you, they range from uh, building a bridge or they give you a couple of spades or they give you some money. And what you do, you will pay that amount of power. And this is a good time to go into our power works. You've got three bowls of power, each with purple tokens in. And you, you'll be circling, circling the, the power around the board. So if you, you, the only time you can spend power is if it's in bowl three. So the way you get power in a bowl three, you have to move everything from bowl one into bowl two before or you move anything from bowl two into bowl three, right? Bowl two doesn't have to be empty in order to spend power from bowl three. And that's essentially how it works. There's also a bit of an exchange rate. So anytime on your turn, you can trade in power for a worker or money or priests. And you can also trade in a priest for a worker and a worker for money. And also you can burn power if you want. So what you can do is you can give up permanently you take a certain amount of power out of the game permanently, but you will lose that many victory points minus one. Right, so back to the power actions. What you'll do is you'll, t you'll choose a power action, you'll, you'll cover it up with one of the, the uh, power action markers, so nobody else can take it that turn, and then you'll take that action. And like we said, they range from building bridges, they, you can get extra spades, you can get money, and they're, they're really handy to have. So that's one of them things that you can take a power action. So the next thing you could do is you could take a special action. This is sort of similar to the power action, so you'll see them on your player board when you when you a strong for example then that will give you a power action and you'll, you'll do you take one of the bonus markers you'll place it on there and you'll take that action there. so the final thing that you can do is you can pass and then what you'll do we like to play the variant out of the expansion where if you pass first you go first in the second round what you'll do at the beginning of the round you would have taken a bonus tile and what you'll do you place that back and you'll take another bonus tile so the third phase of this game is the end of round so what you'll do you'll look down the bonus tiles on the side of the board and you will award any cult bonuses you'll clear any bonus action tiles that have been placed over it like the bonus actions or the power actions and then you'll place one coin on any bonus tiles that haven't been picked this round so what you'll, keep, what you'll do you keep doing this over the course of six rounds and when you get to the sixth round you will end the game and then what you'll do you'll do some end game scoring where you depend on how high up on the cult track you are you'll get points for the longest connected structures that you've built and you can tra you can transform three money into one victory point there's one more thing we've got to talk about and that's towns so if you've got structures at least four structures that are adjacent to each other that have that add up to a power value of seven and you'll see the power value of each structure down the side of your player board then you can found a town and what you'll do when you've found a town you'll take one of the the town tiles you'll place you'll take the bonus you'll place it under one of the structures and then that will allow you to occupy one of the top tiers of the cult track and only you will be able to do that right so that's basically how you play terry mystica there's like i say it's a very very brief overview of the rules it's a very fiddly game with like lots and lots of rules like direct adjacency indirect adjacency you get discounts and points for people building next year and all that sort of stuff so that's basically how you play Terra Mystica my brain has just melted so let's move on to the next thing so what do we like about Terra Mystica we like about Terra Mystica is the huge variety of races that are available in this game and they've all got their own variations so you might have say like the Giants that have got this special ability that allows them to terraform for two spades no matter what or you might have the nomads that will grant you an extra dwelling placement at the beginning of the game or you might have the halflings where every time you use a spade you get a victory point i mean the, 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 these special abilities are massive yeah and everyone it's like it's a bit like marco polo when everybody thinks that everybody's special ability is a game breaker and we love that we love that and we love the fact that when you get your your player mat you can choose between two different factions so yeah there's loads and loads of variety in this game so it seems that all options in this game have been tested like thoroughly like thousands of times right because it, when it, like for example when you're looking at the intervals between all the different types of terrain it seems like somebody's actually gone through and actually mathematically figured out the importance of all these different terrain types from from each faction yeah so so it looks like all the all the bonuses have been well thought out all the way that you can upgrade has been well thought out and it's almost a case of like when you do something that gives you a bonus then they're taking something else away for example you might when every time you you upgrade a dwelling to a trading house you're you're gaining a power and extra stuff from the trading house but you've got to put the dwelling back over so you're going to be losing a worker in the next round right so it's it's really 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 excellent the way that this game seems to have been really well thought out tested and uh, they make, they've made sure that this game works like clockwork 
before it was released. So the next thing that we really enjoy about this is the fact that its, it's length is only six rounds long and by the time you get into the, like the third round you've got your engine going you know the game is going to end real soon and it's it, it's like the, the turns go quicker as the game wears on so it, that keeps the game exceptionally tense and the fact that you don't really know whether or not your end game scoring is going to grant you the victory your, your antenna hooks and it just seems that there's no sort of such thing as a runaway leader in this game you know even if you're sort of way behind it does seem that like the game does sort of push you sort of near it keeps everybody close together so you don't really know whether or not you, you've, you've done enough to win the pace of the game is is interesting as well i mean you you start off very very slowly you you just sort of trying to figure out which way you're going to go where you're going to place your structures where you're going to which bits you're going to terraform who you want to avoid and then you start getting your cult bonuses up then you start getting your favor tiles in and you get the extra extra powerful stuff from your power because that's really hard to get hold of to try and get try and get that that power cycle going and trying to get power into ball three is a sort of a it keeps your your, your mind on something else while you're trying to develop your structures and get your cult cult track up together so you've got all these different things a bit like reminds me a bit like sulking the mind Canada, where you've got all these things floating around trying to keep an eye on one and you might lose track of one or you might lose track of another one where you're concentrating on the thing in front of you and it is it's just wonderful it's wonderful to have to juggle all these different variables in your mind so what don't we like about terra mystica so the first thing and they're probably the most the, the the worst thing about this game is the abstract nature. Okay, there's a picture and a little name about what they are, but that doesn't really have any bearing on the game itself. And when you start playing this game, you actually lose sight of the fact that you are halflings or you, you're the nomads or you're the mermaids or whatever you want to, whatever you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. And it would have been nice had that little tiny morsel of theme been incorporated into the game. A bit more so yeah the abstract nature of this game is a tad frustrating so the second thing that we does our head in about this one is the adjacency rules they, they drive them out of the wall they're, 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 they're confusing they're unclear i had to keep well we've had we played this game multiple times and every every time we drag it out i'm refer, referring back to the adjacency rules again and again and again and it does my head in so another thing that sort of follows on from that is that look, it might just be me it might just be me getting old and my brain cells sort of gradually wearing away but i always forget to activate my special ability and it's all, it's okay if your special ability is sorted out at the beginning of the, of the round like the nomads where they just get to place their extra dwelling but last game we played i was a half thing and i completely forgot that every time i use spades i get a victory point and it's it might be to do with the fact that you're concentrating on all these different things going on at once but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just. It's just me. It probably is. So the 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 last thing that we find really frustrating about this game is it's got the set up and tear down of one of these massive epic Twilight Imperium games. I mean, it takes up like, the whole table. It's a massive table hog, and when you set up, it's you, you've got to place all these like fiddly little bits on your player board, and they're sliding all over the place. And when you've finished, every all, all the components are all mixed up into different bits, and you've got to try and bung them all back in bags and chuck them back in the box. And it's an absolute nightmare. It's like it's almost like the. Sometimes I think, is it worth playing this? Because I know I've got to look forward to the nightmare of putting it all back in the box. But it's worth it, right? So to summarise, is Terra Mystica still worth playing in 2019 and beyond? So yes, Terra Mystica is an amazingly deep, satisfyingly complex strategy game that kind of lacks a bit of theme but we can put that to one side because the amount of choices the the way that there's there's very little random randomness to this game okay you've got the, the scoring tiles get drawn out randomly what you do in the game directly affects the, the outcome the choices you make directly affect the outcome and it's a bit like one of these 18x18 30 type things where there there doesn't seem to be any kind of room for blaming it on the, the random nature of the game so we love the fact that you've got this slow burning feel to the bus portion of the game you've got this midpoint in the game where you're starting to think about the end and then the end comes and everyone's scrambling around burning power left right and center trying to get the last victory points and that's fantastic the pacing of the game really does make it elevate this up it does suffer from a few fiddly confusing pointless 
annoying rules like the adjacency. But when you've got a game that, that, that offers so much satisfying complexity, we can forgive that. We're going to give Terra Mystica five stars because we absolutely love this game. It's, it's, it's an enjoyable game. We're never going to get rid of it. I mean, they, they reprinted it, reskinned re it under the, the, the guise of the Gaia project. But we haven't played that one. There's a there's an expansion. There's a fire and ice expansion for this. Adds more factions. Adds more end game scoring variations. It, it adds loads of stuff. And there's even another expansion coming out, which adds more stuff to do with the sea. I think it's called the Armada expansion or whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. But that's coming out soon, and we will be getting that one. No question about it. We urge you to pick up Terra Mystica. It's one of the greatest strategy games that we have played. And uh, yeah, that's Terra Mystica. So like we said, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel for more board game bollocks. And we'll see you next time.